you. Thank you very much for, for this initiative. Um, really brief introduction. My name is, is Michelle and I'm from the University of Vienna. I am working at the uh, Center for Teacher Training, uh, Teacher Education, sorry, I'm always mixing that up, um, and the Department of Education. And I'm doing um, research and I'm teaching in the area of inclusive education. So uh, the current situation has uh, touched me in, let's say, very diverse areas of my personal, but also my professional life. Um, and I think I can follow up really well on what Alessio said about a couple of things, um, because this, I think you used the term feeling like um, being cut off from uh, from some spaces, from some activities, from, from some routines, maybe even. Um, and this feeling of experiencing borders, for example, which my generation at least has never come across, actually, because for us moving around and having the ability to travel somewhere for the weekend or travel to conferences, and as you said, yeah, maybe sometimes even too often and taking taking it for granted. Uh, this, that came quite as a as a huge shock, and I even had to count like the days or the months, even that I had stayed so many times in one place, like such a long time in in the same place, because I've been all over um, researching, traveling, presenting, uh, networking, etc. And I think this is kind of kind of the two sides of the situation that I see in many contexts now, because on the one hand we are kind of being deprived of our routines or what we assume as normal. But on the other hand, the situation also gave us the opportunity to question some of our practices and also see what else was there and what we were kind of able to do. Um, and when I think about my students and their, their high resilience, you know, um, for example, writing your bachelor thesis without seeing the person who is kind of supporting you or supervising you and I think it's not only hard for myself but also for the students and I I'm really impressed like how every week they show up to these online meetings they're always motivated they listen for hours and I feel already really tired but then in the end they still have questions and you know we we end up discussing for maybe half an hour or even an hour more which I find is is really really impressive and uh, it's also kind of a relief because I think for some of the students, it's really, really important to also have and stick to certain routines that they are kind of used to um, and getting out of uh, probably also being cut off from, uh, yeah, as everybody else um, or staying in, yeah, rather complex situations. Like if they had to move back to the families, for example, or if they, are stuck at home with with kids, for example, man managing jobs, uh, kids, and and uh, studies at the same time. I think it's really really impressive, and I also found that the interaction levels were quite high, which was on the one hand really good, on the other hand it was quite bad for my inbox, which is usually always pretty full, but now it was even fuller. I don't know if you have the same experiences. And I, I've never had um, like three master theses delivered within a week um, of some students that I hadn't heard of for a long time. So I think, I think there were some students who really kind of took the time and tried to make the best out of it or also really thought that this was, was an opportunity for them. And I think it's really important to think positively about it. Um, and I think also this idea of, um, let's say super imposing spaces is something that I that I assume is really really important like you know getting up in the morning and probably changing the room um, and sitting in your office or probably in the same room and uh, you know just changing probably location in terms of uh, getting out of bed and moving from one place to the other in your in your in your flat or your house and I think this is also something really important that we kind of learn what we can do with our imagination, which is some, something that I, I sometimes had even forgotten because as researchers or as teachers, we are quite used at university to stay in our rooms and consult our books, or talk to colleagues, which we can now also do online. But on the other hand, I also thought like when I, now, now sometimes when I get up in the morning, 
I feel like, okay, what do I have on my, you know, on my, uh, on my agenda today? And then I feel like, okay, I'm traveling here and tr I'm traveling there. I'm having a meeting at uh, 10 p.m. in the evening. I'm talking to people who are all over the place. So I'm basically doing the same. And I, I think we are also in quite a, at least for myself, in a quite privileged situation that we can continue with what we are doing. Um, uh, as compared to many other people who probably lost their jobs or uh, find themselves in really, really precarious situations. And I also found myself really uh, like at the early onset in that situation, like what can I contribute? What can I do? What lessons are to be learned? And what can I kind of um, also communicate to my students? What kind of can I communicate to people I've been working with in different places and areas and contexts? And uh, as you also said, Alessio, I found it really, really um, impressive, like speaking to practitioners and learning from them and hearing from them and also being really impressed with the time they actually took to explain to me how the situation is for them. Because, uh, you know, sometimes it's really hard to talk to, to speak to teachers, to speak to practitioners because they are always so busy. And I think they have not been less busy now, but they have been so open and really, um, you know, interested in exchanging. And sometimes I even felt they were happy that they could share the good practices or the good solutions that they found. So I think it's, it's quite interesting to see the resilience so many of these people um, kind of developed or had in, in them and probably had lost it, you know, and now they, they had the time to kind of reconnect and one of the lessons that I've learned, um, I mean, there were a lot or there are still a lot, but one, one of them was I had, a, I had an expert round. I was speaking to some teachers and, and head teachers, and they told me that some students uh, with disabilities or refugee background, they, um, if they had the luck to have a good family structure and a, a safe environment at home, they came back after a couple of weeks now because schools are being reopened in, in have been reopening like two, two weeks ago now here in Austria, like slowly but steadily. And they said that some of the students came back and they, they kind of had learned or developed certain um, qualities that they were lacking before because they had time to kind of bond with their families. I mean, the total op opposite is also happening. We know all that there are a lot of students who cannot be reached. There are a lot of students who are facing precarious situations at home. I don't want to underestimate that um, on, the, on the contrary, but I, I found this question so important and I've been thinking a lot about it. And I think this resilience that we can see also from the standpoint of education studies, um, also for ourselves in teaching, you know, in the beginning, I think everybody was really shocked and we felt like, oh my God, and we have to be, uh, we have to kind of tape our sessions, we have to spend long times in front of the computer, but honestly speaking, I've mean, been doing that before, right? It's just kind of a new quality and um, I really don't like this term of, you know, social distancing because I think it's more like a physical or probably a spatial issue. Um, because in the end, I, I think sometimes we are now being closer because we are simply taking the time to listen to people. And when I look at statistics, how um, like phone bills got up in the last couple of weeks, I think it's so interesting. Like when we think about how many times did we just, I don't know, tape a mess, like write a message on, on WhatsApp or Messenger or whatever. And now I don't know if you feel the same. We're just taking up the phone. We are we are calling people, we are asking like how they feel, we are um, kind of engaging with specific communities now, probably on a, on a different level that is probably even closer to their realities as, as we had before, because then we were just, you know, being comfortable writing emails and sending messages all across. Um, but now I feel sometimes, even if we are really far apart in terms of, of space, probably, we are really close in, um, and we, we see different sides of each other, right? So we can see now the backgrounds of our working <laughs> rooms and environments. We can ask ourselves, are you back to the office? Oh, wow, so nice. And it's, it's kind of quite interesting for me, yeah. So um, yeah, um, to a certain extent, it's really interesting how we are kind of staying in touch, how we are kind of questioning like what was normal before and I think on the other hand, 
something critical maybe to come to an end it's I think it was for some people it was really relieving that um, that it was also quite clear from the beginning that we are not expecting everyone to kind of um, do or bring the same amount of uh, of work uh, that we would kind of bring if, if there was a normal situation um, and that it was also okay not to be as productive um, and on the other hand, I also think that there were so many energies that we kind of were running the risk now of losing because at least here in Austria, my perception of getting back to schools now is kind of, okay, let's take up where we ended before and we're just happy that we can now continue with the kind of normal that we had before. Um, so for me personally, and also from, from a professional standpoint, I think it would be really nice to kind of grab these energies now and kind of try to contain them and also document them and make, make them available for later on, you know, because we don't know how the situation will, will develop. And I think it would be really good not to start from zero later on because we had crisis, you know, we had it many times, but sometimes I, I, I just feel like there's just a lack of documentation and a lack of, of possibilities to exchange. And I hope that this time, and this is why I also really like this, uh, this initiative, maybe this time we can really, you know, uh, find ways to kind of conserve these energies. Thank you. <laughs>